The answer to this question is complicated. No doubt there are going to be people that could easily list out their favorite tracks from all of the MK games, but the overall online sentiment is usually negative. And then you'll hear words like boring, generic, forgettable thrown around with that. But is that really the case? And why do people feel that way? Let's get into it in today's video. The first thing worth mentioning here is that there are many different ways to approach the game score. Since music is a major part of the presentation, composers constantly have to ask themselves questions about what kind of tone or atmosphere they want to create. Does the music fit into the world of the game? Or should it focus on being fast and energetic to support the action? Questions like these are why composers often have to closely collaborate with game designers and find the exact sound that the game needs. But why talk about it when we could show you some of these great examples or play them to you? Anyway, our audience is likely familiar with the Tekken series. The early Tekken titles were all about trying to find not only the good gameplay formula, but also figure out how Tekken should sound, which led to some clashing tunes. The Monument Valley theme from the original Tekken still stands out among all other Tekken tracks that came after it. It's a very atmospheric and dark theme that makes an otherwise scenic stage feel very ominous. Does it make you feel pumped up for a fight? Probably not, but it certainly sets a mood. Compare this to Nina's groovy theme from Tekken 2 that actually has an energetic, bouncy rhythm to it, perfect for jumping into some action. Tekken 4 later played with a few atmospheric tracks, but for the most part, we know which approach Namco took for the franchise. They wanted the music to represent the stages or character, but mainly they wanted it to pull you into the action. Dark or upbeat, rock or electronic, smooth or abrasive, those things didn't matter as long as the music got you excited. What was the result? Tekken became one of the few fighting game franchises where people often underline the soundtrack quality alongside something like Guilty Gear or possibly King of Fighters. Hopefully this slight detour will help us explain why Mortal Kombat feels so different later on. But if you also want to know more about the Tekken music, we've done a whole video on how it evolved over time. Dan Forden, the composer behind all the early Mortal Kombat games, is a very talented musician and an Oberlin Conservatory graduate, where he specialized in making music digitally. This eventually led to him working on music for pinball machines with Williams Industries, Stern, and Midway Games. Here's an example for you. Quite a different sound than what most people know him for, because when it was time to work on MK, Dan wanted to create something that wouldn't just be cool, but would also fit the gritty and visceral presentation of Mortal Kombat. That's why he chose darker, more ominous sounds with a pinch of Eastern influence to make the sound seem more distinct. As both composer and sound designer, he worked closely with Ed Boon to ensure that both the music and the punching, slashing, burning, and screaming sounds just right. The result? Well, it achieved exactly what they were trying to do. MK's presentation was incredibly cohesive and helped to give an otherwise janky game a truly unique feel. The deep, looming bass combined with sharp synths and complex melodies gave it an air of mystery and unease, all while still doing a good job of complementing the brutal action. The only problem with the original soundtrack comes from technical limitations. Back then, music was composed through what is essentially text, and not like the sheet music we're familiar with, but a specific programming language that even required a special keyboard. Forden was also not involved with the music for console ports, which typically led to worse soundtracks on home systems. However, with Mortal Kombat 2 onwards, the shackles were off, allowing Dan to produce a much richer sound, record actual instruments, and cement the signature dark MK tone. Though it wasn't without some experimentation and variety, as the following Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 had both an atmospheric, 
slow track like the bank theme. Alongside the industrial and very aggressive subway theme. This would continue until the 3D era of Mortal Kombat games. As Mortal Kombat grew in scope, and Dan was involved in other studio projects, there was simply too much work for one guy. That's when composers like Rich Carl and Vince Poncharelli joined to help. And while Dan still did most of the Deadly Alliance OST, his involvement with music slowly wound down, to a point where he wasn't even involved on in Armageddon and MK vs. DC. The shift in tone is obvious, as you got way more big orchestral pieces, more rock, and a few electronic tracks. While they did deliver on the general dark atmosphere and had some callbacks to older OSTs, it didn't have the same flair or unique little details like before. After Midway collapsed, the people behind MK became NetherRealm Studios, and they decided to hit the reset button with MK9. It was back to the basics, or rather, the true and tried classics. This included the soundtrack, but ironically, MK9 does a great job of underlying just how much MK evolved as a game and Dan himself as a musician. By his own admission, the Rooftop remake is among his favorite tracks that he made for MK9. Have a listen to the original versus the remake for comparison. Dan continued to contribute tracks to future NRS games, but as his involvement scaled down, we consider MKX onward to be a new era of MK sound, an era that was predominantly defined by understated background compositions that feel as if they are too shy to even think of grabbing the player's attention. You often hear that a good soundtrack is one that you don't notice, as it just perfectly blends into a game or a movie. But in this case, it's more so about the soundtrack doing nothing to stand out. They're not strictly bad. It's competently made music, and they try to play things up with the instrumentation here and there. But it falls short of matching the energy of older titles and seemingly focuses on upholding the established conventions instead of taking the presentation to another level through audio. But what about Mortal Kombat 1? So far, we didn't get to hear too much of it, and hopefully this isn't outdated by the time the video's out. But what we did hear from the beta sounded like the game is going in a completely new direction, with a very modern, electronic, and aggressive soundtrack. It's worth mentioning that in late June, Casey Edwards also confirmed that he's working on the game. If you're not familiar with his work, he was behind some of the most popular Devil May Cry 5 tracks like Bury the Light and Devil Trigger, so it's interesting to see what he will come up with for Mortal Kombat. Going back to the questions we asked in the intro, it certainly feels like the problem with the MK soundtrack is not so much about the quality of it as it was always done by competent musicians, but the approach to it. For the majority of the franchise, it feels like music was comfortably taking a backseat to the action, instead of matching it and being an equal part of the whole package. This approach is fine for some, but many fighting game fans typically expect something with more oomph to it. Street Fighter VI faced some criticism for much the same reason, as some found it jarring to go from melodic compositions and epic themes to largely basic and repetitive tracks. With that said, let's hope Mortal Kombat 1 doesn't disappoint when it comes to music, and erases some of those negative preconceptions that people have about it. Make sure to tell us in the comments how you personally feel about this, and thank you for watching this video to the end. We'll see you in the next one.